This is me, Albert Einstein. I don't want to boast, but most people agree I was one of the most brilliant scientists of all time. I was interested in space, time, speed, and light. And I came up with some pretty sensational theories. But I'll come on to that. First, let's hear my story. Okay, so I may have grown up to be one of the greatest scientists of all time, but I started life just the same way as you and everyone else. In my cot, checking out the world around me and trying to make sense of it all. I was very slow to learn to talk when I was small, and some people think that was because I was developing my bionic stretchy imagination, which turned out to be such an important part of my work. Now let's meet my dad, Herman. He was a clever man, always reading poetry books and playing chess. He was interested in science and engineering, and he was always starting electrical companies. None of them were very successful, but he was quite relaxed about everything. Even me, when I was naughty. <laughs> and here's my mother, Pauline. She was also pretty clever. She liked reading and music. She loves playing the piano and especially the violin. So I grew up in quite a cultivated household. One day, when I was about five years old, I was ill in bed and my dad came and gave me a magnetic compass to play with. I was absolutely fascinated by it. What invisible force was making the needle always point to the north, I wondered. I've already told you I was slow to learn to talk. That's because I was always thinking about things in my own mind. I found schoolwork quite easy, but it was annoying too. I mean, I like finding out my own stuff in my own head, without using other people's ideas. For example, why exactly does that boy's football fly up in the air when he kicks it? And look at that man's hat coming off in the wind. It made me wonder about all those invisible forces. But it was really my dad's brother, Uncle Jacob, who got me interested in science. He was an engineer too, and he knew everything about geometry and maths and physics. Brainy stuff like that. And we used to play games and laugh and talk about interesting ideas together. Look at my sister Maya. She was also pretty clever and she would sit and read while I played with Uncle Jacob and my mother tinkled on the piano in the background. Every Thursday night we had a medical student, Max Talmud, round for dinner. He was a bionic brain box and he was really funny too. And we used to discuss all kinds of interesting ideas. He told silly jokes about science and he lent me lots of his interesting books. My favourite was this one, Plain Geometry. After school, I decided I wanted to be a maths and physics teacher so that I could answer all the big questions in my head. So I went to university in Zurich in Switzerland to learn to be a maths teacher. While I was there, I met an interesting girl called Mileva and when I wasn't too busy doing maths problems, I worked out that I was in love with her. Guess what? I didn't enjoy teaching at all. So I went with Mileva to Bern in Switzerland and got a job in the patent office there. A patent is a clever way for inventors to stop anyone pinching their ideas. Of course, I did my job properly, but what I was really interested in was my ideas about the universe, and I had to be careful not to get caught by my boss. I was a scientist, but I didn't do experiments in the lab with bottles and acids and explosions. I used thought experiments. What's that? Well, it's just sitting and thinking but thinking very, very hard about difficult things. Try and imagine this. What's it like to be on a train that's traveling at the speed of light and is then struck by lightning? Or take a rocket that's traveling into space at 186,000 miles a second and put one twin on board and leave the other twin watching from Earth. Who would age quicker? Hmm. I sat and thought about planets in the sky, about space, about light and how fast it travels from stars and about time and whether it can speed up or slow down. 
All this I summarized in the equation E equals mc squared. Part of my theory of relativity. It completely revolutionized the world of science. Ask your teacher to explain it to you. If you want to wow anyone, just mention my name. My equation, E equals mc squared, and my theory of relativity. They'll fall over backwards. It took a while for everyone to accept just how brilliant my theory was. In the meantime, I took a job in Berlin as a professor. But Mileva didn't like Berlin. Albert, I'm fed up and I'm leaving. At about the same time, I bumped into my cousin Elsa, who I hadn't seen since I was a very small boy. Do you know, when I became very ill, she nursed me lovingly back to health. And shortly after that, we got married. Now, back to my science. In 1919, when I was about 40, there was a total solar eclipse. This was the moment when scientists could see that my idea about how space stretches and bends was really true. Wow! Everyone was amazed. Two years later, I was given the Nobel Prize for Physics. Now I started to become world famous and spent the next years travelling the world explaining my ideas to everyone. They're pretty difficult to understand. By 1933, the Nazi leader Adolf Hitler was in charge in Germany. Bad news if you're Jewish. Like me. Time to get moving. I took Elsa and left Germany once and for all and moved to America where I settled at a university for major brain boxes called Princeton. World War II had broken out and I am very anti-war. Remember, I knew about science and I knew how brilliant German scientists were and I was worried that they would develop an atomic bomb. So I wrote a letter to the American President Roosevelt to warn him about the clever German scientists I liked America so much, I became a US citizen. America was where I died in 1955. Guess what? Doctors removed my brain and scientists analysed it to see if it was bigger or weirder or just different from everyone else's because of all my brilliant ideas. In my 76 years, I came up with the most ingenious ideas that no one had ever thought of before. I made up clever equations to explain my ideas and some totally original thoughts about space being bendy and stretchy. So, give it a go. Try thinking hard about difficult things and see what you can come up with.